If we take a look at sea surface temperatures across the equatorial Pacific, not just from this particular array, which has only provided the, the more recent ones in the last decade or two, but from previous measurements as well, here's what we see. We see periods where it's warm and periods where it's cold. If you just look at this straight line here, this is the 100 year average. But as I said previously, some scientists, including George Philander, thinks that maybe the 10 year average, so you take an average of this 10 years, move up a year, take an average of the next 10 years, move up a year, take an average of the next 10 years. A moving average is a more, uh, more accurate way, or at least a better way of assessing the intensity of El Ninos at one particular time. And take a look at and see why this is true in the last 20 decades. If you take the 10 year mean, what you see is that the average sea surface temperatures have been going up in the Pacific Ocean. In fact, they're warmer now than they've ever been on average. And so if we take an El Nino based on the 100 year average, it's going to look a lot more intense then maybe it really is. And that's really the subtlety of taking the difference between the 10 year mean and the 100 year mean for El Nino and La Nina events. But this gives you some idea of both of the periodicity. So you can see that you might have three to six to nine El Ninos in a given decade or two. So you can see that it happens within decades or an interdecadal variability or if you prefer multi-annual happening every few years, we have El Ninos and La Nina, and this figure tells you that. The big question is, what causes phenomenon of El Nino and La Nina? And it really is a kind of chicken and egg problem, because did, well, we won't go into the chicken and egg, but anyway, which came first, chicken or egg? So. Is it a change in sea surface temperatures that causes a change in atmospheric patterns, or is it atmospheric patterns that cause changes in sea surface temperatures? How do those two things work together? And it's really something we don't yet fully understand or completely understand. These changes, these swings, remember the children swinging. Sometimes the swings are swinging together, sometimes they're swinging opposed to each other. We don't really understand why those kinds of things occur yet. We don't really, haven't put our finger on the kind of cause for El Ninos and La Ninos. We can monitor it, we can even predict it to some degree, but we don't yet know why it happens. But we do know what, what happens during an El Nino and La Nina, and by continuing to collect data and focusing on what happens, hopefully we can begin to unravel what causes it. But for now, we're just not sure. One of the things I talked about is the shift in atmospheric pressure between the Indian Ocean and Pacific Oceans, as first noted way back in 1923, before we were really fully aware of this phenomenon of El Nino and La Nina. But Sir Gilbert Walker tracked differences in air pressure between uh, the Indian and Pacific Oceans, and it was through that work that oceanographers or meteorologists then used Tahiti and Darwin, Australia as locations for continuously monitoring air pressure, and they came up with what's called the Southern Oscillation Index. So when we have higher pressure at in Papiete Tahiti, that's a positive Southern Oscillation Index, or positive SOI. When it's reversed, when pressure is higher at Darwin, Australia, then it's a negative SOI. And a negative SOI, as we'll see, is indicative of an El Nino condition. Let's take a look at the changes in the Southern Oscillation Index, and then we'll take a look at how this actually manifests itself in terms of El Ninos and La Ninos. But it looks a lot like the El Nino La Nina map that we just saw. Here we have, when we have a positive Southern Oscillation Index, we have La Ninas. When we have a negative Southern Oscillation Index, we have El Ninos. And you can compare this with the previous one. And when you understand a little bit more about the Southern Oscillation Index, this will probably make a little bit more sense.